Hi, this is Mark Cook for Kit Kleins Magazine, and welcome to episode 24, yes, 24, of Metal Magic, sponsored by Aircraft Spruce. Now, in this series, we've tried to give you a really good grounding on, on how to work with metal, uh, what your strategies are, the tools you're gonna need, and shop safety, and the entire thing. We hope it's been really helpful to you. Before we move on, I want to thank Paul Dye for all of his hard work in this series. He's really put a lot of effort into it, and we've really been able to leverage his experience as a multi-airplane builder, his thoughtfulness as, as an aeronautical engineer, and frankly, we've tested his good cheer and his patience. Okay, we need to cut it there while I go get some rivets. <laughs> Paul, you've, you've come out really looking good on this, and I really appreciate your effort. I also want to thank Aircraft Spruce for supporting this video series. I think it's really important to understand that we built this as, as an educational series. We really want this to be your go-to uh, when you have, a, have something new that you're, you're approaching on your airplane. Uh, and, and for those of you who are considering building, understand that it's all doable. A lot of people have done it before you. It's all learnable skills. It may seem odd, but it can all be done. There's nothing that's insurmountable in this stuff. So go have at it, have fun, and enjoy yourself. And with that, Let's hop over to Paul and talk about priming. Hi, I'm Paul Dye. In this series, we've talked a lot about building metal structures for airplanes, but one of the things we haven't talked about yet is primers. Do you prime your airplane inside or do you not prime your airplane inside? And if you do decide to primer it, what do you use? Well, I'm not going to give you an answer, but I'm going to talk about some of the considerations you should have in deciding whether and how to prime. Some people go whole hog as if they're priming the space shuttle. Some people don't do any priming at all. It all comes down, I believe, to your own personal experience with aircraft. If you've gone out to the airport and you know of an old Cessna that's just dripping with corrosion, it's got the, the paint is flaking off, um, the, there's rust on the engine mount and the gear legs, you're going to be inclined to want to shoot primer on your brand new home build. If you've done a lot with airplanes that uh, are old and don't show any sign of corrosion and don't have any primer, you're going to be thinking, you know, maybe I don't need to skip the primer. Let's be realistic about this. Your airplane is going to last you 20 to 30 years, unless you're on the young side. And in that case, you're probably going to move up to another airplane at some point. So very few airplanes are going to corrode away to where they're unsafe in that amount of time. So you're really looking at your building for the future, you're priming for the future. I have seen factory Cessnas and Pipers that uh, have sat on the Gulf Coast near Houston in the salt air for their entire lives, 30, 40, 50 years, that were unprimed inside that showed no sign of corrosion. I've also seen Cessnas and Pipers that had paint bubbling off on the outside in the same environment from corrosion. I think a lot of it has to do with are you hangering, are you not hangering, how much do you clean your airplane, how much do you stay on top of the problems. Most of the real bad corrosion problems I see are on airplanes that are completely neglected. They're the ones that are sitting on the ramp with flat tires. They've been there for years. Nobody's looked at them. Nobody's kept track of them. Corrosion is the result. The other cases you can find is if the airplane has been stored inside a hangar for a long period of time, hasn't been flown, hasn't been used, and it's collected rodents. Uh, mice love to build nests inside small little places like wings and fuselages and their urine makes a horrible mess. It corrodes right through things. So I have seen airplanes that were uh, with the wings taken off, that were stored against the wall. The wings are completely useless because they're corroded away from, from mouse droppings and mouse urine. These are all things you should think about. When you buy a quick build kit, let's say you've got a quick build fuselage, a quick build wing, your choice has been made for you as to what is primered inside. In the case of, let's say, a Vans quick build, you'll find that they use a wash primer on the inside, which is essentially clear. They tell you it's been primed. I believe them, because I've seen them shoot it, but it sure doesn't look like it. In any case, there's not much more you're going to be able to do because you can't shoot primer on the inside of that. So 
if you go to great lengths to prime the inside of your tail, you still have whatever Vans decided to put inside the fuselage or the wings. Um, I've seen other quick build kits from different companies that have primer that don't have primer. Um, I believe the little, uh, the little Sonics jet that I built, which is very quick build, doesn't have any primer inside. And remember, that lives in my hangar and it lives in a desert environment, so I'm not worried about it at all. Let's talk a little bit about if you decide to prime, what you can use. If you want to prime but you don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time doing it, think about, notice I didn't say rec I recommend, but think about Rattle Can self-etching primer. You'll find it from different, different brands, but the self-etching part is important because that's what really gives a little bit of tooth to the, to the primer that makes it stick. If you just go get some regular primer from the big box store and spray it on, you can probably, after it hardens, take a razor blade and with the razor blade flat on the metal, scrape it right off. It won't have any adhesion at all. The self-etching does a much better job. I have used personally self-etching rattle can primer on the interiors, the, the cockpits of most of my airplanes and while you do get a little bit of wear, more, you more get dirt than you do actually losing paint or losing primer. If you're going to do the rattle can approach, I suggest from my experience that you use the same uh, paint from the same brand as primer. That's true if, even if you use expensive primer. Now the other alternative is to go with a spray-on two-part epoxy uh, type primer. You're going to need spray guns. You're going to need cleanup. I'll admit it. I'm pretty lazy. I really don't like the cleanup of painting. I don't mind spraying it. I find that kind of fun. If I had an assistant who did all my cleanup for me, that would be wonderful. So the standard process for aircraft surface preparation includes cleaning, etching, alodyning, priming, and top coating. Each one of those steps takes a lot of work. When you have your airplane painted or you paint your airplane, the exterior is going to go through all of those steps. Remember that exterior is going to be exposed to the weather, it's going to be exposed to the sun, it's going to be out there in the elements all the time. So you want to have a paint that stays on the airplane. Um, on the interior, you're not going to see that same kind of wear. It's good to have a, 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 a nice primer layer that's going to stay put if you want to have a primer. Now, the last thing I wanted to say about spray can, you used to go to Aircraft Spruce, which is one of our sponsors here, and buy real traditional zinc chromate primer. I'm not even sure that you can get that anymore because chromate primer is really bad for your lungs. So if you're going to use it, make sure that you wear uh, respiratory protection. Um, Self-etching primer has a little acid in it and it will tend to, um, you'll feel it in your lungs if you're not wearing, wearing uh, uh, respiratory protection. So make sure you get a good mask if you're going to be shooting it. If you're shooting inside a fuselage, you're going to be breathing it. There's just no two ways about that. So there we have it, the primer wars. Some people believe heavily in it. Some people say, I don't really need it. I'm not going to keep the airplane that long. I'm 65 years old. It, I'm going to be dead before it can ever corrode. So think about where you live, what you're going to do with the airplane, the environment the airplane is going to live in and fly in, how long you need it or want it to last, and then if you're still undecided, go look at some old airplanes at the, uh, at the airport. Make your decision based on what you see. Thanks again to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring this series and thanks for watching.